previously on Second Fiddles. Wait, what? We're not doing the usual recap thing? This is a crossover? I'm not needed? Ugh, great. Later, losers. Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions presents Care and Feeding of Werewolves A Second Fiddles crossover episode Marguerite's Garden now offering ambulance services. You maul them, we'll haul them. Hey, I have a possibly supernatural situation on my hands. Would I be able to stop in for a chat? Yeah, sure. When's good? That's great. I can be there in ten seconds. Thanks. Okay, I entered the coordinates. Ready to go. Holy crap, where did you come from? I'm Max. I'm the one who just called. Jeez, you weren't kidding about being here in ten seconds. Uh, what are you, a baby were-elk or something? Hey, I'm human. Mostly. I think. I just have this giant rack of antlers growing out of my head, and some other abilities. Could I talk to Hazel? Hey, Hazel, you have a patient! Thanks. I appreciate it. Who is it? Oh, wow, hi. You must be Hazel. Uh, hi. I don't believe we've met. Oh, no, sorry. I'm Maxim Loft. You can call me Max or Buck. That's my superhero name. Superhero as in cosplay? Oh, sorry. I'm really bad at explaining, like, literally everything. I'm a superhero sidekick from Rose City. It's a huge city on the eastern seaboard. I've never heard of it. It's a whole multiverse thing. I don't think Rose City even exists here. I'm from a different version of Earth where there are tens of thousands of humans with special powers and abilities. There are countless superheroes and villains. My Earth has some minor supernatural stuff going on, but nothing like this Earth. Okay, if you're from an alternate reality, how'd you get here? Oh, it was Passport. Judging by the context and lack of an article in that sentence, I'm assuming Passport's some sort of technology? No, Passport's another powered person like me. He can create portals that, like, send people through space, but not time. He teleported me here across dimensions. Right. Of course. Wait, then how'd you know my name? I have an app that gives me access to millions of podcasts from different Earths. My sister stole it from someone and gave it to me last year for my birthday. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of your podcast. I love Care and Feeding of Werewolves. A first fan! We hit the big time, Hayes! I can't imagine how useful the advice is to you. Are there even vampires in your world? What would happen if a vampire bit you? (laughs) You'd be a moose for Atu. Ooh, I like that. Or maybe Dracula? Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. That was so unprofessional of me. <laughs> so, Max, what can I help you with? I think the dialogue is more organic on this earth, isn't it? On my earth, the dialogue is sometimes stilted, overwrought, and full of exposition. Oh, right, what brings me here? Well, I recently went through an unexpected physical transformation. I'm a sidekick, and my hero, the stag... He was a giant deer with superpowers, and he was killed by a supervillain. Before he died, he somehow transferred his powers to me, and now I can regenerate, and I kind of shoot laser beams out of my eyes, and I have these massive antlers now. They're really inconvenient. I can't fit through doorways without sidestepping, I can't really sleep in a bed, and I have to wear button-ups now because I can't fit anything over my head. I miss being able to wear t-shirts. Dude. Breathe. I see what you mean about the overwrought dialogue and exposition. (laughs) Hmm. 
I don't know if this is a supernatural thing or alien technology, but I was wondering if you could help me figure out a way to lose these antlers? Hmm. Come on back. There are some things we can try. There's more space in the workroom. You'll probably be more comfortable there. But if you prefer privacy, we can kick Julia out. Hey. Thanks. Okay. First of all, do you feel any pain in your antlers? No, they don't have any nerve cells. Okay. So, just in case, try to remain still as I do this. You're the boss, Doc. <laughs> you sound like Julia. Do you think we could talk about my laser beam eyeball stuff? When I get emotional, I can't control it, and I've been under a lot of stress lately. And, to be honest, I have a history of anxiety. I had panic attacks in college, back when I was being bullied, and before I came out as gay, and now, because of my antlers, they've kind of started up again. Okay, let me just get this tool here going. So, <coughs> hold, hold tight. <coughs> Sounds like a couple DBT, dialectical behavior therapy tricks, might help you out. Just let me get my foot on this to brace. There we go. The core of DBT is called wise mind. The wise mind meditates between emotion and intellect. You know, when you're about to throttle your sister and just... Why won't it... And you make the choice to go for a walk instead. That's a wise mind moment. Okay, that's not working. Plan B. I think my sister likes being throttled, if you know what I mean. Ugh, gross. Sorry. Anyway, we're talking about when I can't control my emotions and lasers shoot from my eyes. That's a little worse than being mad at my sister. Okay, TMI, but that's when we break out the big guns. Well, so to speak. It's actually pretty cool how some of these tricks hijack the lizard brain to literally change your heart rate and blood pressure in seconds and... And your eyes just glazed over, didn't they? I'm sorry. Better glazed than shooting lasers. Also, I think one of my sister's ex-boyfriends literally had a lizard brain. His name was Gordon Gecko. No, wait, I think I'm confusing my references. Okay, well, that one's not working either, so. Well, I'll keep it short, and then you can ask questions, okay? Okie dokie. When you're feeling yourself tense up, you can lean into it. Speaking of lean into it, brace yourself for this one. Uh, okay. Ew. Hear me out. Lean into it. Well, you breathe in deep, clench all of your muscles, and really let yourself feel that tension in your body. Then, while you breathe out, relax everything and keep your attention on how it feels. Let go, you blade! As that relaxation washes through your body. The theory behind this is that it's hard to feel anxious and relaxed at the same time. Yeah, they've uh, never been on a really good date. And you have? Anyways, it's called paired muscle relaxation. And it does help. I've used it myself. Of course, your mileage may vary. Do you hyperventilate? What? No. Except one time. And that other time. But only those two. And that was before Bubbles the Devil Spawn Hamster was finally adopted. I have so many questions, but I really don't want to know the answers. So let's just pack those up and throw them away. Paced breathing's good for that. You breathe in deep. Five or six breaths a minute and breathe out more slowly than you breathe in. That's... Pretty standard. Yeah, I was surprised something so basic and widely known was included in a ridiculously expensive training module from the late 1980s, but then I remembered, oh yeah, for-profit healthcare system. If you can repackage it, you can resell it. Still, 
it is a useful skill for a lot of people, at least in this world. So maybe it's worth repeating it a bit in yours. Now, where was that hacksaw? Oh, my favorite one. Intense exercise. You spend the angry energy on something else, like running, lifting weights, or punching the living bejesus out of something. Oh, that's right. Yep. Get those endorphins going, and you'll feel less likely to laser blast someone into oblivion. Even better, working out like that regularly will lessen the need for emergency push-ups. Not that I do those, but Julia does. Now, my favorite one is this one. Shock your face with cold. Dunk or splash it in cold water. Put an ice pack over your eyes. Something. Just trick that mammalian dive reflex into happening. Assuming your world evolved along the same lines as our world, because if you didn't have a mammalian dive reflex and your eyes are glazing over again. Anyways, suddenly, there you are. Normal heart rate, normal breathing. You'll still be upset, but your autonomic nervous system won't be making it worse. I think one of my old frenemies used to talk about the diving reflex. He was an otter. Not the lean, hairy, gay guy kind of otter. I mean, like, a river otter. Sorry, you were saying? Ooh, I like otters. Anyway... (laughs) Tell him about the fuck that, no, fuck that one. Last but not least is opposite action, or as Julia here likes to call it. Well, you heard, that's basically the gist of it. When you get the urge to do something you know is harmful, you do the exact opposite. Basically, if you feel an urge, you ask yourself if it's full of shit or justified. And if it's full of shit, well... Do the opposite. What is the opposite of full of shit? I don't want to know. So if I feel like I'm going to shoot laser beams from my eyes, I should... What? If the emotions aren't justified, then do the opposite to what those emotions say you should do. Destroy shit? Go make something instead. To hurt someone? Go do something good for someone. If the emotions are justified... Try one of the other tricks, like shocking your face with cold water or paired relaxation. That will give you more time to process everything that's trying to come out all at once. Oh, thanks for that. Max, I am sorry, but your antlers are regenerating as fast as I can saw or blast. Are you okay? Yes. No. I don't know. Are my eyes glowing? Uh, A little. Not much. Julia, cold water, please. On it. We're good. Here you go, Max. Just splash some on your face and hold your breath for a few seconds. Wiping your face after feels good, too. Yeah, there you go. Hmm, dimmer but still glowing. Want to try some paired relaxation? Will it help? I'm already doing the breathing thing. Good. Your eyes are almost out. I mean, glowing, not, I mean, they're still in your head. Was that a close one for you? Well, I kind of imagined living the rest of my life with antlers and... Yeah, it was fairly close. I'm sorry, Max. Well, at least we tried. Hey, is Otto around? I've always wanted to see if my powers worked with mythological creatures. Shooting laser beams at a dragon is probably not the best idea. But I'm curious for science. No, not those powers. My original powers, the ones I've had since I was a teenager, are to communicate telepathically with animals. That's why I was working for a giant deer. I was his interpreter. Can you understand him? He said that he's a carnivore and I smell like an herbivore? Well, I am a vegetarian, so that makes sense. Oh, he probably means the deer part of me. Sorry, Otto, I might smell like venison, but I think I'm human. 
I'm probably not that appetizing. Hey, buddy, you can try to eat me if you want, but you couldn't get your mouth around more than a finger. <laughs> I could step on you. Speaking of fingers, ask him why he bit me the first time we met. Ah, sure. Yeah, he says he didn't appreciate the thermometer. Well, then next time, don't bite the thermometer. He's telling me he's really hungry. Could he get a snack? <sighs> Of course. It's Julia, right? Yep. You, uh, really listen to the podcast? Yeah, it's great. I'm happy I'm actually meeting you. So, what's it like being Hazel's sidekick? Uh, I'm not a sidekick. I'm her nurse, if anything. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. I'm a sidekick, and I love it. I just really like helping people, and it's nice to not have quite as much responsibility. Hey, I I have a ton of responsibility. I mean, I got my work at the garden, sure, but I gotta earn more than that for rent. I work three jobs. The garden, bouncer at the pit, and I fight prize bouts to make up the rest. I'm only 16, dude, and ain't none of that legal. That's a lot. I help people because half my time I'm hurting them for money. I like fighting, but this underground shit? I'd rather spar at the gym, you know? I actually run a support group for sidekicks called Second Fiddles. It's really just a handful of us sitting around whining and talking about our days, but they've turned into a sort of found family for me. Do I really give off sidekick vibes? <laughs> I guess if I'm a sidekick, I should know my backstory. Got missing family? The sidekick searches for him, right? Well, I don't know the orc side of my family. I've been thinking about trying to find him. Maybe I should, I don't know. I've got a lot of reasons why maybe I should. I've never exactly embraced my orcishness. You know, one of the cool things about being a masked hero was that I could take off my costume and go about my day like everyone else. Now there's no point in having a secret identity. I can never go in public again without being recognized for my antlers. I get it. I dye my hair to cover the green tint and stay out of the sun to keep my skin from turning kind of greenish, too. I get enough of crap for being big and ugly. I don't need it for being green, too. Speaking of that and all the DBT stuff, that kind of crap is why I work out so much. I could use a workout, buddy. What do you say? I work out a lot already. Really? Doesn't really look like it. Does masturbation count as exercise? I... I don't think so. Then yeah, maybe it wouldn't hurt to try something different? Speaking of pumping lizards, Otto here ate some dried basilisk instead of his lunch. I'm gonna need your help getting him to hork it up, Julia. Max, it's been a pleasure. I'm sorry we couldn't help more. Call me, bro. Did I just get broed? I don't know how to feel about that. So will Max get a hold of his power? Will he take Julia up on his offer? Will Max become a bro? Tune in next time on... Ahem. Good day. Thank you for listening. Today's crossover episode was written by Matt Johnson and Frederick Elmore. Hazel was performed by Brenna Anderson Dow, Julia by Frederick Elmore, and featuring Matt Johnson as Max and John Pupo as me, MacGuffin. Hear more about the adventures of Max and his friends on Second Fiddles. You can find us wherever you enjoy podcasts, or visit secondfiddlespodcast.com for more information. I said good day, sir. 
Care and Feeding of Werewolves is a podcast distributed by Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions and licensed under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution share alike 4.0 international. All content on the Care and Feeding of Werewolves podcast is fictional. Find us on Facebook or Tumblr at Care and Feeding of Werewolves, tweet us at Care Werewolves, or email us at feedingwerewolves at gmail.com. Please rate and review. This podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of an episode. Especially if you're shooting freaking laser beams out of your freaking eyeballs. (laughs) Hmm. <sighs>